When most people imagine the end of the world, they see a flash in the sky. Nuclear fire, mushroom clouds, entire cities obliterated in seconds. Humanity has lived under that shadow since 1945. But what if the apocalypse didn't come with a bang? What if it came quietly? On the breath of a stranger in a subway car? In a handshake at the airport? In a cough <laughs> on an elevator? What if the next world war isn't fought with missiles and tanks, but with microbes? This isn't science fiction. Biological warfare is a threat so real, so immediate, that it might eclipse even nuclear war. Because while a nuclear bomb destroys a city once, a virus can keep multiplying, leaping from person to person, silently spreading until it topples nations. Think about this. The 1918 Spanish flu killed up to 50 million people, more than World War I itself. That virus wasn't engineered, it wasn't weaponized, and it spread in a world without modern air travel. Today, with 4.5 billion airline passengers per year, a single infected traveler could trigger a global pandemic in days. And modern biotechnology means we're no longer talking about nature's accidents. We're talking about engineered super viruses designed to spread faster, kill harder, and resist every treatment we have. Here's the chilling difference. A nuclear bomb is loud. You see the blast. You know you're under attack. But a biological weapon is invisible. You don't even know the war has started until the hospitals overflow. History has already given us warnings. In 1950, the U.S. Navy sprayed bacteria into San Francisco Bay in Operation Sea Spray to test how far pathogens could drift. Within days, people reported strange infections. In 1942, Britain tested anthrax bombs on Greenard Island in Scotland. The soil remained contaminated for half a century. In 1979, a Soviet anthrax facility in Sverdlovsk accidentally leaked spores into the air, killing at least 66 people. Though Western intelligence believes the toll was much higher. These weren't fiction. They were real experiments, real accidents, and real casualties. But those were crude compared to what's possible now. With CRISPR gene editing and synthetic biology, scientists can cut, splice, and design viruses like Lego bricks. A pathogen can be engineered to spread like the flu, but kill like Ebola. Others can be modified to resist vaccines or antivirals, ensuring no existing treatment works. Some researchers even warn about ethnic bioweapons, pathogens tailored to exploit genetic differences in populations. Imagine a virus that doesn't just kill, but selectively kills. Still think nuclear war is the worst case scenario? Let's run a thought experiment. Imagine an engineered pathogen released in New York City's subway during morning rush hour. Day one, patient zero boards a crowded <laughs> train. He feels fine, he coughs once. Within minutes, dozens inhale the virus. By the end of the day, hundreds are exposed. Day three, hospitals report clusters of patients with flu-like symptoms. Doctors assume it's seasonal influenza, no red flags. Meanwhile, travelers leave JFK, Newark, and LaGuardia airports, infected but unaware, heading to London, Tokyo, Dubai, and Sao Paulo. Day five, the first patients die. But they don't just die, they deteriorate with terrifying speed. High fever, respiratory failure, neurological collapse. Doctors realize this isn't the flu, it's something new, something engineered. Day seven, panic. Social media explodes with rumors, conspiracy theories, and fake cures. Pharmacies run out of basic medicines. Grocery stores are looted. Day 10, governments impose quarantines, martial law in some districts. But compliance is patchy. Some refuse, others flee, spreading the virus further. Day 14, infections appear worldwide. London, Delhi, Sydney, Mexico City. Panic spreads faster than the pathogen. Stock markets crash. Airlines collapse. Borders close. But the virus has already won. It hitched rides on people who moved before anyone knew it existed. Day 30, the death toll climbs into the millions. Hospitals worldwide collapse. Food supplies break down. 
Military units report mass sickness. And in the background, something even more dangerous brews. Countries begin to suspect each other. Who released it? Was it China? The US? A terrorist group? Or was it just an accident? Miscalculation could lead to retaliation. Retaliation could spiral into conventional war. And in the chaos, a nuclear strike could be launched by mistake. This isn't fantasy. Simulations run by the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security found that a smallpox-like outbreak could kill 150 million people in a year, even with modern medicine. That's more than any nuclear exchange short of all-out apocalypse. The real nightmare is that bioweapons don't even need to be lethal to win. Imagine a virus designed not to kill, but to sterilize. A silent weapon that ensures a rival population dwindles over generations. That's war without a single shot fired. War waged in DNA itself. Unlike nuclear bombs, which require uranium enrichment plants and missile silos, bioweapons can fit in a vial and a backpack. Now, pause and ask yourself, would you even know if one had been released? That's the horror. A nuclear detonation is obvious, but a virus? You'd think it was flu season until it was too late. By the time leaders realized what was happening, it could already be everywhere. And unlike nuclear fallout, which is localized, a pathogen doesn't stop at city limits. Borders mean nothing. Armies can't fight it. Tanks can't roll against it. Missiles can't shoot it down. And yet, most governments are still far more prepared for nuclear war than biological war. The US has missile defense systems, underground bunkers, and nuclear retaliation plans. But against a fast-moving engineered virus, we have limited vaccine stockpiles, fragile hospital systems, and no global coordination. There's another layer most people miss. Bioweapons are almost impossible to attribute. If a nuclear missile hits, you can trace the launch. Satellites, radars, flight paths, it's obvious who fired. But if a virus emerges, how do you know? Was it an accident in a lab? Was it terrorism? Was it natural? That ambiguity is dangerous. Because in the fog of confusion, nations might assume the worst. And once nuclear powers start blaming each other, the escalation ladder is short. So ask yourself this, could the next world war be fought not with bombs, but with breath? Could the next apocalypse come from a cough, not a missile? It's not just possible, it's likely. Nature alone has produced killers that dwarfed wars. The Black Death in the 14th century wiped out a third of Europe. That was without gene editing, without labs, without intent. If nature can do that, what could human ingenuity unleash? The scariest part of this story isn't if it happens. The scariest part is when, and whether we'll even recognize the threat before it's too late.